All right, so last week we uh, switched over from American shows of the 50s and we dipped into British shows of the 50s. And uh, there might be less of these than I thought there would be. Some of the ones that I found as I looked into them more, they were mislabeled. They're actually from the 60s. They weren't from the 50s. So we got this one for this week and there might be one more next week. And I think that actually might be it. I think we might be all out of 50 shows from... From Britain. Okay. Yeah, at least that I can easily find. Like, I'm sure there's more in the world, but just, you know, doing my basic web searching and stuff, there's not very well, much. Well, see, they, they were very much probably like Canada. They were making movies, but they weren't, they weren't like TV central like right. the Americans were. The BBC became, uh, I don't know what year the BBC became like a government operated TV business just like the CBC in Canada, but I, I would suspect if it was the 50s, it would be very, very late in the 50s. And, uh, and yeah, just nobody cared about saving stuff in general back then. Like, uh, I'm sure you probably heard the, like, more famous thing is, like, Doctor Who, which, when did that start? That was the 60s, right, when that started? Uh, I think Doctor Who is about 1962, maybe. Thing with Doctor Who, this only became a news story now because Doctor Who is still famous and they still make Doctor Who and stuff. But there's all these original episodes of Doctor Who that are gone, and it's because uh, they just thought it was just another dumb show. They didn't give a fuck. And apparently, there was even because they couldn't foresee the world we have now. Like it was one thing to rerun stuff on TV; even that seemed unlikely. And nowadays, that we can just archive everything on the internet. Like they had no idea that was going to happen. So apparently with Doctor Who, just keeping the tapes in a warehouse was more money than they wanted to spend. They would just literally tape over them, like they did with the, the news and just stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that's Doctor Who. So the shit that, like, for I'll tell you right now, this show is called The Larkins. If no one cared about Doctor Who, nobody cares about The Larkins. <laughs> you know, no one's even heard of that. No one knows what that is. Okay. Although I guess I bring up The Larkins as an example. This is actually... But the very fact that we're watching this proves that that is not what happened with this show. So, uh, so uh, there's not even much to say about this. So it was created by a guy named Fred Robinson. And you know how with all these other shows, there's a reason. Like it used to be a comic strip or it was a radio drama. There is no reason I can find at all about the production of this. This Fred Robinson guy has no further information. I have no idea who he is. This was just a show that ran from 1958 to 1964. So I had quite a long run. Yeah, so, and it was really years. really successful. In 1960, they started making it into a comic strip, and they made a movie also in 1960, right in the middle of the TV run. So it worked backwards to how most of them worked. Yeah, who Is knows? Is it a comedy? Is it a drama? Yeah, it seems to be some kind of domestic comedy of just like, uh, you know, family, the dad, the wife, the kids, the neighbors. Uh, and I think I saw a comment somewhere, someone complained about a laugh track. So we might be back in laugh trackville. And, uh, yeah, the only other thing I know is, unlike many other British sitcoms of the era, all the episodes of this show still exist. So that's oh. weird. And I'm wondering if maybe, well, we'll have to wait till we see it, if they're copying the American thing at the time. See, Leave it to Beaver would have been the Americans' biggest right. show. I'm just going to assume, though, that this is not like that no, because but it's but, British. But, <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, but they're American. Those were the American family shows that were big time. So here we've got a, a British family type show. Like, I just can't imagine a British show that's like Leave it to Beaver. Because I've never seen a British show that's not like wry and sarcastic to some degree. I can't either. And I don't mean that it would have been a copycat. It's just that if you're, you've got American family type shows that right. are be, that are such a big deal. Because they were. By that time, they would have been all over everywhere. So if you want to promote something... You say, hey, let's let's do a family show because, hey, they're kind of popular now. And yeah. that would be that man's in for doing a family show that seemed to have no relevance before, no no background, no vaudeville, no right. comics, no no movies, nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe he just went into the BBC and he's just like, ah, you know, uh, husband, wife, kids, neighbors. Yeah. yeah. We, she, I love it. Shows, you know how big they are in the States. They're, they're just the cat's meow over there. Hey. And that really never stopped. I mean, yeah, you know, all in the family up to like through fucking Married with Children and then The Simpsons and then now it's like Modern Family. Like, yeah, that's once they hit upon that archetype, it's like straight to the moon. We're yeah. never going to stop. <laughs> so that could have been his selling point. Yep. 
Who knows? The nice thing is, I thought we were going to watch episode three, because that was the earliest one I could find on YouTube, but I just dug around a little more, and I found the first one. So, I mean, we might as well, just might to make well sure. Might as well watch it. Well, this is quite a jump from uh, our little fellow that was in the private school last week. Yeah, and it is pretty late, too, like 1958, but technically still the 50s. And the timing on this, it says the episodes are only half an hour, but this one is almost 40 minutes, and I don't know if that's just a mistake on YouTube or mm. if that's actually... And I'm looking at this sign, the Midlands, and I'm wondering if that means it is set in the Midlands of England, like Newcastle, Birmingham, Liverpool, right. where the Beatles are from. Uh, any of you know that area, not London, but north, real working class people with real thick, broad accents. Yeah, I was going to say maybe we're in yeah. for some big accents yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not into like the class like you would have in Britain where you might have all the classes showing and very rich people living. Um, to me Midlands cries out and says, "Look, working class." Cool. All right. Well, let's see. Let's give her a shot. See what we see. <laughs> I don't like this music so far. <laughs> some insurance money. Alder shots would be where the uh, base was. Because I remember people from Canada going over to Alder shots. That's where they trained for the war. So is that insinuating what she wants? So she spent all the money and there was some insurance money that was supposed to come through, but it's only coming through in 1959. I see. And this is 1958. So that's she why. She miscalculated. So that's why he's saying, get me Aldershot, take me back, put me back in prison. And she thought she could spend all this money on the party and stuff. Yeah. It's okay. All right, well. <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a little tough to talk about this one because it's really bland, really mundane. Like, Except it, it picks up at the end. Sort of, but I mean, not very much. So it's basically <laughs> just, yeah, just a really, I mean, it didn't help that this one was double length or whatever that, you know, but, the but it, But it had, a, it had a surprise ending. And I, this is probably why it survived from 1958 to 64. All of these episodes, I bet if you watch them, start off very bland, but there's a catch halfway through. And this one was... We always think it's the young son who's going to be arrested and taken off to the military prison, but it isn't. It's the father. Yes. So that's the first twist. Then mom's spending all this money based on some kind of an insurance policy of some kind that's going to come good in 1959. She's miscalculated. She spent all the money. It's 1958. He but wants I mean, to go back into prison. But it's still lame as shit because it is still just she spent a lot of money on a party, which is really boring. And yeah, so the whole plot of this was this this family's son was coming home from the army and they have throw a big party for him. And then some military people show up to arrest Larkins for for desertion. desertion. And it turns out it's really the dad who was the deserter. So, I mean, yeah, so like that is interesting for like a second, but they immediately just in the very next scene were like, oh, the military made a mistake. They apologize. None of that happened. So, yeah. so I mean, I got to assume the other episodes, they probably are better because it would at least move along a little faster. But this is still like if if you imagine like, you know, one of those like uh, lie detector things, it's like just a flat line. And then at the end it goes beep. <laughs> one time, like this is so still this very is show, boring. This was show number one, correct? Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, so we had to be introduced to the characters, which obviously are going to last for about eight years. But, uh, and but again, it was so boring. Part one, <laughs> part two, like nothing happened. And presumably that was to introduce us to the characters. Right. And I mean, I guess maybe back then people just weren't as familiar with archetypes, but it's like, okay, we got the wife who is the head of the family, the one who is clearly run stuff and just railroads over everyone just bulldozes them doesn't listen to anyone doesn't listen to anybody just does what she wants but isn't dumb like gracie allen like actually no, is no. in charge so that's nice at least the dad is just all purpose upset about things and doesn't like spending money the so daughter a lot of men i know <laughs> yeah but... yeah it is funny that this this is set like this is the same like we talked about before it's always the wife has it together the 
husband's an idiot. That's how it is in every sitcom ever. So they already had that. And the daughter's married to a, an American guy who you were Who's talking a about. Former GI and is obviously married a war bride. But he certainly has no no GI type qualities. This guy is like you were talking about. Leave it to Beaver earlier. This guy is the Leave it to very Beaver. Very sanitized. Yeah. Very American. So boring. But yeah, I would say the overall impression though is yeah, like last week's show with the. Uh, boys school was a lot better but yeah, the other thing this whole scenario reminds me of is the old Andy Cap comic strips because they were obviously kind of northern and and you know similar thing the big angry wife and just the drunken layabout no good husband but like those were like again they had kind of harsh they had some bite to them Andy Cap was like drunk all the time and spent all their money and fell in the fucking the canal and and his poor wife is always like having to literally fight him to make anything happen but there's none of that in this like this was just I, I'm surprised it was popular enough for like a movie and stuff like why was it popular at all except that there's except, nothing else on uh, I'm, I'm thinking of it as Series number one, where you have to introduce everybody. So you got to spend a whole lot of time kind of getting people used to who people are. By the time this show finished at the end, I would watch another one of it in the future to see how these people develop, because now we know who everybody is. But it takes you the three parts to get to that point. The first two parts are so boring, and they are, but, they, but if you think of it as completely introductory, that fits and then they've got that little british twist at the end they you know where totally unforeseen things happened at the end even to the point of mom spending all the money like you're thinking like, why mom who is in so control such a control freak running the household why is she spending all this money willy-nilly but even still, it's still just fucking lame. Like, who cares if she's got insurance money coming in? I just don't care about any of this. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. No, it's then not it enough. It ends up that she spent all that insurance money, and she doesn't have that insurance money. Yeah. She's so, a year uh, early. She was going kind of crazy because she thought she had all this goods to spend, and she doesn't. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just can't give this this show any points for anything. Well, I it's couldn't. Shit. I, couldn't and, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't give it any points until I got to the tail end of part three, and right. things started coming together, and there were the little twists of plot. I think it would be worth looking at another, maybe two or three shows down the line. Now, yeah. once you know mm -hmm. who everybody is and seeing how those shows develop. Because there had to be something with this show that caught people's interest so that it would last on TV for eight years. Yeah, no, I think you're probably right about that. Like, I think it probably, maybe it actually was a mistake to watch the first one, because this is kind of a sitcom thing in general of like, I think we've talked about this before, how rare it is to even see the first episode of a sitcom. Usually you just come in midstream. Right, and the reality is you don't need to, you don't need to have all that introductory stuff. Right. It's pretty quick. You're pretty quick to pick up on who people are, how they fit into the plot. And that, unfortunately, with this one, is what made the, those first two parts were so boring. Yeah. The American guy, thank God he was there to fill in the dialogue so that we could understand what was happening. Because we could understand him, but we could not understand that strong Cockney accent. We missed so much of what those people were saying. Yeah. You just kind of had to put it together. And he was the bridge that put it together for our accent. Which is interesting, though, because I wonder what, his, what he was intended to be for British audiences, because they don't need a translator. So, uh, like, what... What purpose did that guy serve? By 1958, you have got such famous family television shows in the United States of America. You've got, uh, there, there's any number of them by that time. This guy is the American that ties into those guys. Yeah, that, that, that does make sense. But yeah, I'm still surprised, though. I'm uh, still surprised at how toothless that was. I really didn't expect that from a British show. I didn't either. I was expecting more witty witticisms, more uh, you know, sharp the only, commentary. Like uh, The only thing it had that kind of does remind me of the vibe of British TV is that generalized sense of downtroddenness and kind of depression <laughs> of just like angry families with money problems and stuff. Because like British shows, I'm always surprised, like, when you watch the British version of The Office, it's, like, hard to watch. It is, like, 
so depressing compared to the American version, which is like a fun time, yeah. hilarious comedy. But uh, the other thing I was thinking with British shows, even shows that you remember as just hilarious comedies, it's funny to go back to them. And like, uh, like, have you seen Faulty Towers recently? Not recently, but I saw all the Faulty Towers. Man, though, that show is another one where I was surprised to go back. Like, it's so British. Like, Basil Faulty is under so much stress all the time in every episode. He's never happy for a second. <laughs> it's well, like, could you be married to uh, Prunella or Priscilla? I think her name is Prunella. But there's just always so much pressure, which is just what I think is funny about it. Like, like TV in England doesn't have that same feeling of fun. It's more like everything is falling apart all the time. And, <laughs> it's just... and again, you gotta, when you think of this one, okay, this is 1958 Britain. And it's done in the Midlands. Okay, so we're around in the industrial Britain. Uh, these are people who, World War II, bashed Britain to hell, killed all kinds of people, whether they were civilians, uh, you didn't have to be just somebody in the military, innocent people, just blasted whole areas, just destroyed them. So these people were rebuilding, and they're still rebuilding. Like, we're, we're like... Five, uh, eight, we're only 13 years after World War II. They didn't have time to be developing class TV like they did in the States, because remember, the States were never affected by any of that stuff. They sent military over, but they weren't bombed and blasted and having to rebuild and all this stuff. So when we started this, and I was talking about the American house sanitized and clean, and everything was just so beautiful. Beautiful 1950s America. I think these guys are trying to copy it. Yeah, now that I think about it, the name the Larkins, doesn't it make you think of the Waltons? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And, and there, I guess if you compare it to like the Waltons, it is definitely more British and definitely more, but by British standards, yeah, this show is squeaky clean. <laughs> it like, is, yeah. it is. So it's almost like, I think I think that's how this guy got this thing introduced. Yep. Here were these American TV shows who were just hauling in the big bucks over in the States and everybody living in these sanitized worlds. Now, theirs is not that sanitized, but it's very, very much like a British version of those American TV shows. But when we're doing this stuff, I think you have to put yourself... You can't watch it from the perspective of of 2021. See, like, that's the thing, trying to put myself in the time frame. All I can imagine is myself walking into a British living room and going, Oh, are you watching the Blaine Larkins again? Yeah. Turn that shite off. <laughs> I'll watch cricket. I'll watch anything. Turn it off. I hate the Larkins. <laughs> well, okay, here's a perfect example of how things... You, you watch things that develop. Okay, so there's a retro show on TV lately, and I had never watched The Brady Bunch. But one evening... I watched The Brady Bunch. One show was all I could take. It was so sickening. And, and now when it's on, it's like, oh my God, I can't stand it. One show. That is a good example of I like took. a show I'm familiar with, but Ugh. I've never seen. And it'll be, yeah, I'm like curious to get to it eventually and just Awful. to see. But... It's, it's terrible. You know what this kind of reminds me of too is, because yeah, maybe back at the time, it was probably novel even just to, to have a family that wasn't, from London and was kind of blue exactly. collar or whatever. But but that makes me think of like our version of that was like Roseanne. I didn't like that either. I'm like, I don't want to watch this show about a bunch of schlubs. But a lot of people did. <laughs> yeah, a lot of true. people loved Roseanne. The other thing <laughs> about it, and I commented as soon as I saw it, this show was very much as if it was being performed on a stage. Yeah, yeah, they're still in that. Very area. theatrical. Uh, not, not, not TV movement, action, which by 1958 in the United States, they had moved ahead. They were very much into TV movement. Uh, this show was very much like the early, very early American TV shows where you've got the set, get on the set, act as if you are on a stage. So yeah, I think, I think I've got one more 50 show from England. Hopefully I do, because it'd be nice just to cap things off to get, because we've got now, we've got like the one show that was pretty clever and not bad, and the other show that was kind of bland and wasn't really working. So hopefully we can get a trifecta to get a better sense of 50s British TV. But uh, surely I can find at least one more show.